So sorry, what what were asked? Three B. Oh. Okay. By the way, remember I said they've rationalized the denominator. This is not the answer we're gonna get. We are probably gonna get uh, something like this: root three plus one all over two root two. I think that's what we'll end up getting. So if you did get that, you're right. And I said to check, all you would do is you would write this as a decimal. So the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 equals divided by 4 equals. And then go the square root of 3 plus the square root of 1 equals divided by 2 root 2 equals. And you will get the same decimal. So if you got that, you're right. I'll do it anyways. Uh, what are the angles that I know in radians that I have special triangles for? What are the big three? Okay, so I would make a little list over here. I would say I know pi by 3, pi by 4, and pi by 6. Although, Hannah, I would be clever. Because it's over 12, I'd do myself a favor and get a common denominator. This is 4 pi by 12. This is 3 pi by 12. And this is 2 pi by 12. How can I use two of these and get an answer of pi by 12? I can either go 3 minus 2 or 4 minus 3. I think I'll use these ones because they're smaller numbers, and maybe I'll do better. I think I'm going to write this as the cosine of alpha minus beta, where alpha is 3 pi by 12, except Blaine, I'm going to write pi by 4 because that's the angle we're familiar with, minus. And beta is 2 pi by 12, but I'm going to write pi by 6 because that's the angle we're familiar with. Uh, can someone read to me what is the cosine of alpha minus beta, except instead of alpha, can you say pi by 4? And instead of beta, can you say pi by 6? It's, it's, it's cos cos minus sine sine or cos cos plus sine sine? I can never remember. Okay, so it's going to be... Cos pi by 4, cos pi by 6, plus sine pi by 4, sine pi by 6. And I know all these. I just got to draw my triangles. So over here, I would draw my 1, 1, root 2. Very bad drawn triangle, but I don't care. I got the numbers right. And I would draw my 1, 2, root 3 triangle. And now it's more, uh, I need to make sure I know the angles and plug and chug. Pi by 4 is this one here. What is the cosine of pi by 4? Now I just saw one student, one over root 2. I just saw one student, yeah, yeah, there's lots of room, unfortunately, to make sloppy mistakes on this too. I got it because we're doing about 10 calculations. But also, Martin, can you see though, I mean, the math nerd in me likes this because if aside from solving equations and graphing, this is the entire trig unit in one question. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, let's see. Uh, pi by 6, which is that guy right there. Pi by 6, uh, cos is uh, root 3 over 2 plus. Sine of pi by 4 is 1 over root 2, opposite over adjacent hypotenuse. Sine of pi by 6 is 1 half. I'm going to get a lovely common denominator, which is kind of nice. I'm going to get a common denominator of 2 root 2. And can you see I'm going to get 1 times root 3, which is root 3. The plus sign drops down. 1 times 1, which is 1. I'm going to get root 3 plus 1 all over 2 root 2. Before I forget... Let's talk about the schedule. Let's talk about our plan of attack. So today I'm going to be doing one lesson of applications of trig. Monday I'll be finishing off applications of trig. We're finished trig. I'll also have a take-home quiz for you on Monday on identities. I'll be going over the take-home quiz, and I have a great big huge take-home review quiz for you here. 
going over the great big huge take home review quiz. So right now I'm leaning towards your test either being here or being here. And I know it's the last day before spring break, but I figure if you guys agree with me, it's better to do it before spring break than have a week off and trying to remember. So so I I, I mean I, I hate doing a test the last day of. Now also during this time our senior boys are trying to play some basketball at the BCs just down the road and often if they're playing during the day we take a bus down during the day. If I scheduled the test here or here and there was a game during the day I would expect that you would talk to me and find a time to write it during your study block. The last thing you want to do is not write it before spring break because I'm doing my report cards over spring break which means I'd be giving you a zero temporarily on the test and an eye on your report card. And also, the whole week off, you'd forget most of it. So I'm trusting you can be mature. I don't quite know whether it's going to be here and here. This weekend, I'm going to start counting up all the days for all my blocks, and I'll send an email out probably. Well, you guys will probably tell on Monday, but I'll also send an email out. Also, that probably means I'll be doing a tutorial in these couple of days here somewhere. Is that okay? I also feel bad. I was trying to get the trig at the beginning of the week because I figure some of your other academic courses are going to be trying to do tests here. But, you know, I, I tried to be as nice as I could. I just can't fit it in with my other blocks. And I do feel bad, but it's just not going to work the way I want it. Not unless I rush things and have you learn it not as good. I'd rather have you have two tests on one day but have feel more comfortable about the math test. So not the ideal, but as good as we're going to get. So there's uh, three B. What, someone else asked another question. I can't remember. Six? Yep. Uh, I'm going to do uh, cos of x plus y. I'll let you try sine of x plus y. And I do like this question. I do like this question. I do like this question. Except, to me, this is a bit overkill asking you to do both. So, Hannah, I wouldn't ask you to do both on a test. But let me show you what I like about this question, because this is also one that really covers the entire, the entire trig unit aside from solving equations. Here's what I don't like. What letter did they use right there? Capital X. And tangent is what over what in terms of the graph? Y over X. I don't like that they used X's and Y's, and these are also X's and Y. To me, on the test, I guarantee I'm probably going to use like a capital A and a capital B there, or a Greek letter and a different Greek letter. OK, anyhow. Here's the first thing I notice. If I do a sketch, they're telling me that this first angle, big X, is between 0 and pi by 2. Angle X is right there, somewhere. Sine, cosine, and tan are all positive. And they're telling me that angle Y is between pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2. Angle Y is, sorry, is between pi and 3 pi by 2. Angle Y is right there. Tangent is positive, but sine and cosine are. So, Hannah, I'm going to do this one here. So x is alpha and y is beta. Can you read to me what cos alpha plus beta is from this sheet? Except instead of alpha, can you say x? And instead of beta, can you say y? Cos big x, cos big y minus sine big X, sine big Y. Now the one we did in our notes, they had given us cosine. Which trig functions have they given us here? You know what? Here's what I think then, what they've really done. I think that for angle X, tangent, what did you say it was? What over what in terms of the graph? I think they've told me that Y is 12 and that X is 5. Could I figure out what R is? How are X, Y, and R related? Yeah, not on your formula sheet. There's a, yeah, what, I, what I've told you to memorize is usually because it's not on the sheet. If, I think if you do the Pythagoras, you're going to find R is 13. Oh, and also for angle Y, they've told me that Y is 4 and that X is 3 except I'm wrong. Look up for a second. Do you see where they told me angle Y was down there? Can X possibly be positive? 
Can y possibly be positive? In fact, both of these were negative, and that's what made tan positive, because you had a negative divided by a negative. And I think if you use Pythagoras again, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, I think you're going to find that r is 5. And I'm assuming you're good on Pythagoras, so I'm not going to reshow that. Because we're done the hard part now. Are you ready? Now it's plug and chug. Cosine is what over what in terms of x, y, and r. And we're talking angle big X, so we're going to use this X, this R, 5 over 13. Cosine for big Y is going to be negative 3 over 5. Minus. Sine for big X is going to be Y over R, 12 over 13. Cosine, sorry, sine for big Y is going to be Y over R, negative 4 over 5. Conveniently, I end up with a lovely common denominator, Hannah, of 65. And in fact, on the top, I get negative 15 minus negative 48. What's a minus minus the same as? Yeah, this is really going to be 48, take away 15, 33 over 65. Okay. That's a nice review of almost all of trig. In fact, I'll be honest, on your test, I'm pretty sure I didn't give you tan, tan. I'm pretty sure I gave you like tan secant or something. In other words, I didn't give you x, y for both of them. I'll give you 2 and I'll give you 2, but they might not be identical, but you'll still use x squared plus y squared equals r squared to find whatever you're missing. I'll also be honest, I probably won't try and make them work out evenly. You might end up with an r of like 3 root 5. Shut up and deal with it. Okay. Any others? 9? I don't think I signed seven, did I? Okay. You know what? Eleven is much more similar to what I'm going to give you on the multiple choice. Hannah, eleven is just like the one you asked me. They want cos of x minus y. Again, they're unfortunately using x and y again as variables, which I think is dumb. Because if we're going to have x's and y's and also x's and y's in our work, could you make it more confusing? In fact, I probably, if I was doing this question, would cross out. I would probably do this. Just because I'd get confused otherwise with so many x's that are different x's from the other x's that aren't the real x's. You're going to need your graphing calculators today, which means if you don't have one, it is important that you fess up, humble yourself, and come get one from me. Oh, you guys are pretty good. Can you turn, please, to lesson nine, sinusoidal functions? What we're going to be doing for two days is we're going to be working on applications of trig functions. Applications of trig functions. There are lots. Trig functions appear all over the place in nature. Today, in your homework, we're going to give you the equation. Next class, you're going to have to derive the equation. And I'll actually do one example with you at the end of this lesson just for practice. It says this. Read along with me. A function whose graph resembles sine or cosine is called a sinusoidal function. Now, kids get confused, Blaine, because it says sinusoidal. They think, oh, it's got to be a sine function. Actually, sine or cosine, which both have the word sine in them, by the way, are sinusoidal functions. So sometimes you'll be trying to get a sine graph when it's way easier to do a cosine graph. In fact, the most common one we're going to end up using is negative cosine because most applications start out on the ground. And negative cosine is the graph that starts out down low. The graph of a sinusoidal function is called a sinusoidal graph. 
Many periodic phenomena have sinusoidal graphs. Example, the time of sunrise as a function of the day of the year. What's the shortest day of the year? So December 21st would be down here. What's the longest day of the year? Days get longer, days get longer, days get shorter, days get shorter. Days get longer, days get longer, days get shorter, days get shorter. It's a trig function. Uh, the height of a Ferris wheel as a function of time. Ferris wheel goes up, Ferris wheel goes down. Ferris wheel goes up. Ferris, in fact, anything that rolls is a trig function. Hannah, the depth of the ocean due to changing, changing tides as a function of time. It's a trig function. We're going to simplify it here. We're often going to use a period of 24 hours. It's not quite. I think it's like 23.7, which is the why the tides don't just repeat themselves all the time, all the time. But tide goes up, tide goes down. Uh, how many of you have ever seen, like in the movies or in a hospital, those heart monitors that beep, beep, beep? It's a, it's a trig function. Heart compresses, heart relaxes. Heart compresses, heart relaxes. In fact, someone can correct me if they get into pre-med, but I think they actually call it your sinus rhythms. Like you hear the word sign in there. Okay. They're all over, trig functions all over the place. Ever bounce on a trampoline? Trampoline down, trampoline up, trampoline down, trampoline up. They show up all over the place. So in this lesson, we're going to give you the equation. In the next lesson, we'll derive the equation. Now, most of the time, they're going to be functions of time. The variable instead of x will be t. But we're going to use our graphing calculator, and we'll just clue in. Oh, we don't have a T button. We use X. Okay. Uh, not, not a convenient T button. T there on your graphing calculators actually means parametric equations, which we don't do. It's easier to show you by doing an example. It says this. The minimum depth D meters of water in a harbor T hours after midnight. Now, I read these carefully because here's what this means. If I see a number with the hours next to it, that's a t variable. And when I look at this equation, that's sitting where the x is. If I see a number with meters next to it, that's a d variable. That's a y variable. Uh, the equation is this. They've written this step in a bit of a weird order. The vertical displacement, instead of putting it at the end, they put it in the front. I would normally write this, Leslie, as 5 cos 0.5t plus 12. But we'll leave with what they've written. It. I guess they want us to be a bit flexible. So take a look at this. What's the amplitude of this? Can you see it? 5. What's the vertical displacement? 12. I know it's written in the front, but that's the same as having a plus 12 there. So here's my question. If your vertical displacement is 12 and your amplitude is 5, what's the lowest we get? 7. What's the highest we get? 17. So part A wants the minimum and the maximum. 12 minus 5, 7. 12 plus 5, 17. Total distance, 10. Determine the period of the function. Well, the period is 2 pi over b, which is going to be 2 pi over 0.5. What's 0.5 as a fraction? Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by. Yeah, I think the period here ends up being 4 pi. Part C says, write a suitable window which can be used to display the graph of the function. Here's how we're going to show that we're writing a window. We're going to use a square bracket, sort of like the edge of a window. And what we're filling in are good values for x min, x max scale, y min, y max scale. So let's think about this. This is my x variable right there, but what is it really measuring according to this question? What does the T stand for? Time. Time in what? And how long? Oh, did they give me a suggested domain here? Yeah, I think I'm going to go from 0 to 24 hours. 
Now, I could have a scale going up by ones, but my graph on my screen is only about that wide. If I have 24 hash marks, will I really be able to distinguish them very well? Twos, you know what? I think even better would be, uh, I'm going to go up by fours. And what about a Y window? Well, Y is the depth of water. What's the lowest we get? Seven. What's the highest? Now, I have a personal preference, though. Whenever I'm talking about depth, I like to see the ground. So I'm going to go from zero, and I'm going to go a little bit bigger than 17. I could go 18, but I'm going to go to a nice round number. How about to 20? That should give us a fairly centered graph. Scale. Do I want to have 20 hash marks vertically? No. It would be a good scale. Two would be a little crowded. I think it would work. I'm going to go uh, fives because I can count good by fives in my head, and it does go evenly into 20. No wrong, really wrong answer for scale. Now we want to graph this. First thing you better do is make sure your calculator is in radians. Mine is. Go y equals and clear any graphs you have there. And we are going to carefully type in this equation. 12 plus 5 cos 0.5x close bracket. Enter to store it. Double check to make sure I copied it right. Oh, Steph, I don't have a T. I got to use an X. I don't have a D. A clue in, that's why. Window. I'd like my X min to be 0. My X max to be 24. Scale 4. Y min to be 0. Y max to be 20. Scale 5. And if you hit graph, you should get a lovely tide goes down, tide goes up, tide goes down, tide goes up. Graph. Do you? I don't know. What did I say? Now, if you did not get that, you must tell me right now because we're going to be using this a whole bunch. And you need to be able to do this on your own. So don't pass it to your neighbor. You need to learn this. Anybody okay. else? Because you will need to, on the test, on your own, Type in a word problem equation, pick a good window, hit graph, and then do stuff with it. I will not help you. Okay. Let's do some stuff with this. So we have our lovely title graph. D says, what is the depth of water to the nearest tenth of a meter at 2 a.m.? What are they wanting me to find in this question? Depth. What variable is depth in my equation, x or y? Y. What have they given me in this question? Two. Is that an X or is that a Y value? Okay. If they give you an X value, we're going to use trace. If you hit the trace button and you type in the X value that they gave you of two and hit enter, it will tell you the y value that goes with it. You know what the depth of water is at 2 a.m.? 14.7 meters. Couldn't have. Oh, um, what if instead of 2 a.m., what if it said 2 p.m., what would you type in for your x value? Yeah, 14. They don't do that very often. They do once in a while. So make sure you read time very carefully, right? You'd have to realize we have to go military time, right? 
E. A ship which requires a minimum 8.5 meters of water is in harbor at midnight. By what time to the nearest minute must it leave to prevent ground grounding? What are they asking me to find here? Time, is that an x variable or a y value? That means they gave me a y value. What y value did they give me? 8.5. Okay, so if they give you a y value, we're going to use y2 equals 8.5. And then we're going to find the intersection. If they give me a y value, I go y equals, and under y2, I type in that y value, 8.5, which is the depth of the water that we're interested in. Because if you hit graph now, this is a nice visual picture here. Madeline, I think this, here's what it's saying. The ship is fine, fine, fine. You know what? If it's in the harbor at this time, it's going to hit the bottom. Fine, 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 fine. Oop, bottoming out. And this question says, by what time to the nearest minute must it leave? I think it wants this first value here. How can I find this first value here where these two graphs what? Intersect. Second function, calculate. Intersection. First curve, enter. Second curve, enter. Guess. And I get 14.692 hours. Sorry, four point, I get 4.692 hours. 4.692 hours. Got a new problem. Oh, I'll wait. Yes? This is in hours. What do they want the time in? Okay. How do I change 0.69? You get this okay? Okay. close to the root. Back to my question. Hey, how do I change 0.692 hours into minutes? Is it? Convince me. So here's, in case you forget, I would go like this. One hour equals 60 minutes. What's a half an hour? What's a quarter of an hour? And I would say, how can I change each of a 1 into a 60, a 0 0.5 into a 30, a 0 0.25 into a 15, and hopefully you'd clue in. Yeah, multiply by 60. So if you blank out, don't freak out. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go clear, clear, clear. I'm going to go 0 0.692 times 60. I get 41.5. Four forty-one point five. Although it says by what time? If I round this up to four forty-two, we're actually too late, aren't we? It's already bottomed out. So even though technically I should round this up, I'm going to be safe and I'm going to say equals four forty-one a.m. Better be gone by then, or you're bottoming out. Nope. In, in all honesty, this would probably be multiple choice. F. What's the next time, to the nearest necessary minute, that the ship can return to the harbor? Then. Isn't it? Because now the water is deep enough again. So, find that. Oh, and then change the answer to hours and minutes as opposed to decimals. I'll do it up here slowly, see if you can do it on your own.
I got 750. Actually, I got 752, and I started to round <laughs> off properly. And I, well, no, wait a minute. It's actually a little bigger than 752. So at 752, it's still scraping the bottom. I better round up, even though mathematically I shouldn't. Situationally, here I better. Right? Here's the problem. At 752, it's still not deep enough. It's it's going to scrape. 753 is when it can get in safely. That's why I think it said to the nearest necessary minute. I think what they're saying is, oh, and by the way, don't just blindly follow math rounding rules. Look at the real world situation. There are some times where you always round up. Okay? Yes? Turn the page. In a certain town in BC, the time of sunrise for any day can be found using this equation. What does the letter T stand for according to this question? Yeah, time of day, basically, right? Time and hours after midnight. The T stands for the time of the day. What does the letter D stand for? The number of the day in the year. So day 34 would be February 3rd, I think, if I've done my math correctly, right? Day 119 would be, I have no idea, but somewhere in January, February, just past March, somewhere into April. Write a suitable window. What's sitting where the X is? Day. I guess I'd like to start out with day zero. What should my final day be? 365. By the way, take a look. Can you see B is 2 pi over the period? I think the period is going to be 365. Good scale. You know what? Why don't we go up by 30s, because that's roughly by months. Not quite, but close. Close enough. What about my y values? What's the vertical amplitude of this graph? Hannah, 6.3. That's the middle, by the way. That's also spring and fall sunrise time, because that's the middle. Uh, what's the amplitude? 1.79. You know what? I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to call it 2. <clears throat> Two down from there and two up from there. What's the <laughs> lowest we're going to get? 4.3. and you know, But you know what? I want the ground. I'm going to go from zero, even though 4.3 is the lowest this thing is going to get, up to 6.3 plus two, just to keep the math simple, is 8.3. You know what? How about from zero to nine? That should give us a nice centered graph. Scale? Yeah, I'd probably go up by ones. Now we're going to carefully, 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 carefully type this in, making sure we're not missing any decimals along the way. Y equals, clear what you got, clear what you got. Negative 1.79 sine 2 pi bracket. Oh, I don't have a D. Oh, X. Minus 78. Close off that bracket. Over 365. Close off the trig function. Plus 6.3. Enter. I'm not going to hit graph yet because my windows are terrible. Window. 0 to 365. Going up by 30s. 0 to 9. Going up by 1s. And now if you graph, you should get exactly one full wave, because the period, I think, is 365. You get exactly one full wave? Oh, very nice. B 
It says, use the formula to determine to the nearest minute when the sun rose on May 7th, the 127th day of the year. So this 127, is that an X value or a Y value? Trace, 127. Enter. 4.963 hours. Oh, but this doesn't want hours. What does it want? To the nearest what? Okay, so I'm going to take the decimal portion, the 0 .963. 0 .963 times 60. I'm getting 558. Approximately 5.58 a.m. That's what I'm getting, 4.58. Can't you read my writing? Sorry. Let me, I'll make that a little clearer for you guys. C. Determine on which days of the year the sun rose at 7 a.m. Okay. 7. Is that an X value or a Y value? 7 a.m. Ah, time. This time is the Y. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use Y2 is 7. What if it had been 7 p.m.? What would I type here? 19. And honestly, the highest this graph is, gets is 8. We wouldn't have any solution because the sun never rises at 7 p.m. Does rise at 7 a.m. How many times? Twice. Let's find those days. You get day 55. You get day 284. It's your homework. Number one, cross out F. Number two, let's, ooh, top secret satellite. I like that. Number three, ABC. Four. And then, remember the biblical review of epic proportions? This great big thing here. This thing. I'm gonna give you. There's a few more questions you can now do. You can now do any word problem where they give you the equation, like number five. Let's circle that one. Number seventeen. And 48.
107. Take home quiz for you Monday. I said I was going to do an example of one where we actually found an equation from scratch. I'm going to hold off because you guys are looking kind of well down, bad, out of the zoney. So work on the homework instead. <laughs>